First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you to MIT and BJ, Claudia, for the invitation. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'll talk to you about Uruguay. How many of you have been in Uruguay? Can I ask? Few. How many of you could confidently pin in the map where Uruguay is? OK, not bad. I may understand that it's a small country, only 3.5 million inhabitants. 10 years ago, Uruguay, inspiring Niklas Negroponte in this, in this campus, they decided to go for the one laptop per child initiative, providing computers to every single kid and connectivity to all the schools. And we have learned many things out of that. Not only changing the technological infrastructure, you will be changing the mindset of people. Technology is not enough to move into openness and open, being open to other ways of learning, other ways of teaching. But the other thing which is really important that we learn after these 10 years is when you turn a privilege into a right. Remember, 10 years ago, having a laptop or a tablet was really a privilege. When you change a privilege into a right, there's no way back. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about not a lot about technology, but I'm going to refer much more on what has been going on in terms of these other conditions that may enable to facilitate le learning in different ways. This is a work that Claudia Broveto, uh, Fiorella Gago wrote with me, uh, or I wrote with them. I don't know. I have to mention their names, otherwise they will kill me. Um, and what I'm going to refer now is a global networking which UI is part of. It's a really interesting and challenging initiative because it's a kind of action research. It's a leading lab in a, in a really large extent. And also, I will identify some of the challenges behind. Let me start mentioning that this is framed in a partnership called New Pedagogies for Deep Learning. How does it work? It's a really broad network of countries which have been decided to work together connecting schools, 100 schools in each one of those countries, creating a cluster of innovation. How does it work? Different schools face different problems, and when they explore possible solutions, they share those solutions with other schools in the same country, and afterwards, with other countries. OK, sounds interesting, but a little bit messy. There are a few interesting things of this approach. First of all, this really broad scale networks of schools with widely diverse cultural backgrounds. The second thing is learning by creating, inspiring John Dewey and others, this idea that you can learn better when you practice. And the third thing, how to move forward a, a new accountability of the learning outcomes that can go beyond the traditional ways of assessing. And believe me, this is really, really difficult. So let me tell you a little bit about this. What is the flavor behind this approach? Co-creation. So Paulo Freire was mentioned a minute ago, rather than thinking in the learners as this empty container that need to be filled, thinking in this active learning, which the learners play a much more protagonist role. And learners, not only the students, but the community as a whole. Learning in, in, in terms of focusing on translating and negotiating knowledge from different disciplines and different backgrounds. The second component is, is, is exploration. Exploration means that it's OK to fail because it's a key part of the process. And when you move into that, you really change the landscape. Similarly, the idea of experimentation. When you think in new ways of learning as a better version, you really change the mindset of teachers in terms of you are not criticizing their work. They don't need to defend their work, but they are embracing in this exploration. And finally, evaluation. In a world, it's not only to value what you measure, but also it's to measure what you value, although it can be difficult to measure. And deep learning is grounded in some of these skills that I'm sure you're really familiar with. We have seen that tag and labeling with different umbrellas, 21st century skills, soft skills, people skills, even hard to measure skills have been called somewhere. Uh, we call it six C's. But the, the, the soul of this initiative is to enable collaborative problem-solving initiatives, addressing challenges which are relevant for the students, and encouraging them to use knowledge from different disciplines, from different contexts, to explore possible solutions, and then share those solutions with others. So there are a number of ways how to do that. The first one is strongly multidisciplinary projects. So the boundaries between disciplines here are not applicable and not relevant, because the idea is to bridge 
knowledges from different backgrounds. The second thing is this idea of measuring in a different way. It doesn't make a lot of sense to innovate in the technology and innovate in the pedagogies if you don't innovate in the way that you measure. So progressions and other ways of assessing and identifying the skills are really, really important. And also, when we say the, the students are co-creators, they also can be co-creators of the evaluations as well, not only a passive subject that is evaluated. And that is really a challenging goal because that really means to change the language of the school. Not only addressing summative assessment, but formative assessment and finding bridges between, which is something that may sound similar, easy, but it's not all that similar. And, and the other topic is networks of schools. It might sound obvious, but it's not that obvious. Sometimes the schools, they don't have enough exchanges between themselves. And when you open these environments of exploration, you create really interesting bones behind. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Uruguay. This is an, initi an initiative that has been promoted by the National Administration of Public Education and Plan Saival. Plan Saival is this one laptop per child initiative that I mentioned earlier at the beginning. So in a way, this is a top-down initiative. Good. There are a few interesting things about Uruguay. It's a strongly egalitarian country, a strong middle class with a stable democracy and advanced legislation. I don't know if you're familiar with, but marijuana is about to be legal there, so you're very welcome to come. And very low levels of corruption, but not everything is a rose garden. We have a, no, a, a number of problems in education. Only 70% of the children who start middle school are able to complete the cycle. And only 40% of the students who start in the high school are able to, evaluate, to graduate. And finally, in the first year middle schools, we're up to 30% of children who repeat. So we are facing really strong problems. The second one is this a highly hierarchical structure, strongly centralized and with little opportunities for horizontal innovation. And the third aspect that can be contradictory what I mentioned earlier is socially stratified. So students from low or middle low uh, incomes, they perform lower than the rest. So that is really a problem because it's increasing the, 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 the inequality of the social gap. Now, how are we working on it? In the ground, in the, in the context of these new pedagogies for deep learning, um, promoted by this initiative, Red Global, uh, we are doing a lot of work in, in capacity building, again, changing the language of the school, changing the, the, what is understood as knowledge and what is the role of the educator, and with a strong emphasis as well in the idea of exploring new ways of measuring the learning outcomes. And the idea is some of these learning outcomes, but particularly some of these learning currencies, knowledge currencies which are behind, are exchanged with other countries and there's a really interesting innovation ecosystem. So what are the interesting things of this country, of this experience in particular, this leading action research one is the scale. Usually we see a lot of inno innovations uh, in, in different countries, but in many cases those innovations are tested in pilot contexts, strongly controlled, well off, or, or really, really interested in, in make this pilot happen. And the idea here is to move in a larger scale. So it's, the first year was 100, the second year they replicate to other 100 schools, and now the idea is to increase up to 10, 15, times that in the whole education system. The second thing is this idea of multiple innovation fluxes. So it's a top-down, because it's the government promoting this initiative, but it's a bottom-up as well, because learners, they do have a voice here, and they can claim and complain and suggest other things that are being addressed. And also, it's an open innovation initiative, because the whole spirit of that is to share the learning outcomes with other schools that were in the world. Now, one of the interesting things is we, in this context, understand teachers as learners. So there is a really interesting association between educations and learners in which they, they're okay to explore ideas together. So within the school and with other schools, as I said. And the other aspect that can sound a little bit contradictory with what I mentioned at the beginning is technology is not the goal. So we have a invisible understanding of technology or a tacit understanding of technology, which means technology can be used, is very welcome to be used, 
but it's defined by the students and not by the educator. If the kids want to go with robotic, programming, stop motion, 3D printers, they're okay to do that and we facilitate that. But technologies are driven by the learners. And we don't provide any kind of training on how to use technology because we think we can contribute stronger in other things. Other aspect that is relevant are the deep challenges. So the, the challenges are we raise some of the concerns that kids have, I will mention some as examples, and we give a number of weeks to explore possible solutions and then share those solutions with the schools in other parts of the world, such as how to develop carbon, carbon footprint friendly devices, how to eat better, how to talk beyond the, the boundaries of languages, and how to explore sustainable energy in a different way. You wouldn't expect that kids would be worried about these sort of things, but in this case, has been a really, really encouraging example. I'll show you a little bit, a little bit of that. pero no nos podíamos, no podíamos tocarlos ni nada, entonces le pedimos a la maestra para poder usarlos. Y ahí empezó todo, mirando biolecciones y construyendo cosas. Las biolecciones es cuando, o sea, aprendimos por, por medio de videos de, del canal de YouTube de Silvani. Bueno, fue increíble. Ahí me sentí, dije, la tecnología acelera 100%, porque los chiquines se encontraron con, con una videolección y clasificaron piezas del, del kit, lo armaron, lo programaron en dos jornadas de dos horas. Nuestro próximo desafío es juntar eh, la tecnología verde con los kits de robótica y poder hacer un robot que, que solucione un problema de la humanidad. En mi clase hicimos con la, con la maestra el tema de guerras mundiales y, y a mí se me ocurrió hacer un robot que detecte las minas. Eh, me parece importantísimo que ellos hayan pensado en una solución para nuestro planeta. Este robot fue creado para la huerta. Para, este tiene un sensor de movimiento, cuando pasa algo por delante, empieza a vibrar. Y entonces eso lo pondríamos ahí con una alarma. Y si pasa un pájaro que quiere comer las plantas, sonaría la alarma. De que los mismos niños pueden eh, sortear dificultades con mayor facilidad dentro de lo que es el manejo de la tecnología a lo que de repente puedo hacerme yo. Eh, bueno, este es el proyecto que yo hice. Eh, con los maestros le pusimos Terminator, con una pila de 9 voltios, con un cepillo, con dos vibradores Justin y con cables. Vi que había ese intercambio con la casa, porque los chiquitos precisaban la ayuda de los papás, entonces ya estaban buscando qué iban a usar, qué no lo iban a usar. Usamos eh, un problema que había como nuestro barrio, claro, que se juntar en vez de la humanidad, la achicamos un poco a nuestro barrio, a nuestro contenido, a nuestro barrio Camalín. Y me, me asombré de, de que estaban este, apuntando a un problema real, que tenían conciencia ciudadana de lo que estaba pasando en este, en, en este barrio. En 2012, en la playa Malvin acá, murieron cinco personas porque cayó un rayo, entre ellas un niño. Entonces lo que queremos evitar es que en el mundo y en Uruguay, especialmente en Uruguay, se termine este fenómeno, que no haya más, tipo, o sea, no haya más muertes en las playas debido a rayos. Trata de que cuando va a caer un rayo, no, te avisa. In order to be on time, just let me wrap up. So there are some challenges, definitely a number of challenges behind this initiative. The first one is this really demand and change of the mindset. And that is not always that easy. It's not as speedy as in installing technology. And it's interesting because sometimes this tension with the changing of, of, of mindset is coming from educators or principals, but sometimes it's coming from parents. So it's a whole different language <clears throat> and it takes some time. The second thing is, the idea is to define not a single unified metric of how to trace and how to identify the progression of those outcomes, but to explore a tool set, an ecology of, of possibilities. The third challenge is participation. In some of the trainings, sometimes we have only one set of the participants, and this social innovation changes only happen if you have the people on your side. So this is something that we are working really hard on. New pedagogies for deep learning aims at the end of the day to put the learnings at the center, but exploring a curriculum that go way beyond the classroom. 
And the technology, although the technology luckily is already there, because the kids already have it, the idea is to use it in the most flexible and widely diverse possible ways that they can. And this is definitely a, a benefit. So at the end of the day, rather than improving the scores, which is what you usually see in many of the education programs, the idea is to include, increase the relevance of the learning process, whatever it takes place. And the idea now in, in Uruguay, they are discussing if they will scale up this program into a larger scale or not. And this is a matter to be seen, but I'll be happy to be in the next link to tell you about that. So before finishing, just to say that we have learned that learning is a social practice. And this is, I guess, where is the main innovation. Thank you. Thank you.